Welcome to Wild Turkey Science, a podcast made possible by Turkeys for Tomorrow. I'm Dr. Marcus Lashley, Professor of Wildlife Ecology at the University of Florida. And I'm Dr. Will Goolsby, Professor of Wildlife Ecology and Management at Auburn University. We're both lifelong hunters and devoted scientists who are passionate about hunting, managing, and researching wild turkeys. In this podcast, we'll explore turkey research, speak to the experts in the field, and address the difficult questions related to wild turkey ecology and management. Our goal is to serve as your connection to to wild wild turkey turkey science. And we're back. It's good to see you, Will. (laughs) It's good to see you too, Marcus. (laughs) You know what? It dawned on me that turkeys actually aren't doing anything right now. <laughs> so <laughs> they're probably hunkered down in the the deepest, darkest place they can find. Because man, it's been hot. It? Uh, if it, yeah, it ha- it's. I mean, it's definitely been hot. I feel like the end of July it was worse. But um, yeah, we because we've been having some days. I remember <laughs> I got all excited on. Um, Sunday, I remember after we ate dinner because um, I told my wife, I looked at a, I've got like one of those little weather stations, you know, yeah. it's got like a little, you know, the outside sensor and then it mm-hmm. tells you like the temperature and humidity. I've got it in my kitchen. And uh, I was like, on Sunday evening, I was like, it's only 88 degrees and 50% <laughs> relative humidity. We ought to go outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, let's go sit outside. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I mean. What do you think turkeys are doing? I wish it was 68 you know with 50 percent but i mean you know even like feeding around Mm -hmm. yeah i just it's gotta be hard it's gotta be i mean you know i haven't i haven't had the opportunity to watch turkeys a lot this time of year but i have with chickens you know and having free range chickens and you can see how they pant you know if they get out if they get out in the sunshine in the middle of the day this time of year fun fact when we catch turkeys in South Florida in the dead of winter, they are most of the time panting. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it's already, it's like right on that threshold where it's too hot to for them to have that stress. I mean, everything in Florida is panting all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot who it for was one, the other for, day. For the I, heat or some other reason, who knows? <laughs> I forgot. I forgot who it was off the top of my head, but somebody the other day walked by me. I was like, oh, did you go for a run? And he's like, no, I just walked. I just walked outside. You really said that to him? Yeah. I mean, they were they were really sweaty. And so it looked like they had been working out. Yeah. And and they were just passing by. We were you know, just kind of exchanging words. And I was like, oh, have you been working out? No, I just went walking. <laughs> Oh my word! So, yeah, you didn't yeah. St- you didn't put your foot in your mouth that quite that bad. No, no, and uh, you know it was it was all in good fun. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, um, speaking of you know hoping for cooler weather, weather starting to change. You know, I know kind of one of the things that we wanted to get done today was to um, share some of the topics that we had upcoming and. Um, you know, maybe there'll be some time for listener feedback on those topics, or maybe they'll suggest yeah. some some additional new ones that we hadn't even thought of. Yeah, I think that that is a a good idea. You know, we're like we've said numerous times, people are probably tired of hearing it. We are trying to address things that people care about, and there are a few topics that come up regularly. That we, some of them we still haven't even touched. Mm-hmm. So, you know, what, the one that I'm thinking of specifically is people keep asking us about cows. Yeah. Like grazing, how does grazing affect it? Can we, you know, how do we use that, that mm-hmm. habitat management tool for turkeys? People see tons of turkeys on places that have cows. Mm-hmm. There's been a lot of work with cow cattle grazing and interacting with fire regimes and mm-hmm. how that could affect turkeys so yeah that's a topic that i think we should try to address soon and we really haven't touched it yeah yep because we don't know anything about it hardly <laughs> yeah i don't yeah. 
<laughs> I'll speak for myself yeah. then. I don't I don't yeah. know that much about no, it. I, I mean I think relative to the people that know a lot about it, we don't know anything about it. Well that's what I'm thinking of. And you know, I know some basics related to, you know, how cows are a source of, you know, dis- soil disturbance and, you know, how you can use them to remove, you know, dead vegetative material and, you know, open yeah, yeah. open it back. Like I know all those general things and I and I'm familiar with the general concept of patch burn grazing but I've never done any of it. So I don't feel qualified Mm -hmm. to really, you know, speak to it. Yeah. It hasn't been the focus of either of our research or extension programs. I'm kind of like you. It's been more adjacent, Mm -hmm. you know, I know people that work on that quite a bit and I've participated in some levels of, of that kind of work. And I, I grew up on a, you know, a piece of property that had cows on it and I've worked cattle. It was my, you know, my job during my teens, I worked on a farm that mm-hmm. part, you know, part of the operation was focused on cattle. So I have some background with it, but yeah, you know, I really want somebody that is has focused their program on it. Come on and, you know, talk about it and yeah. how it, it, it's difficult to find that person that also is passionate and really knowledgeable about turkeys. Too. Yeah. So it's, I, I'm kind of coming. Yeah. I'm kind of coming from that same background. So I, I lived on a working Angus farm for several mm. years, but it was like, it, there was never any integration of right. the beef operation yeah, and the wildlife separated. management on the property. Right. Mm-hmm. So the, if it was inside the fence, it was cattle only. If it was outside the fence, it was, you know, mostly deer and turkeys only. So, yeah. Yeah. But, so I think that will be a good topic. Of course, you know, folks out there have some thoughts on that, and, and I'm sure some will share it, and we welcome it. <laughs> yeah. Bring, bring it on. You want to talk about another topic? What, what yeah. else? Yeah, sure. Um, so let me pull it up. Oh, you got your notes? Yeah, I just I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything. <laughs> <laughs> this is a classic distinction between our our demeanor and styles right here. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, another topic um and this one is probably going to be coming to you sooner rather than later, especially given the time of the year that we're in right now, but it's flu- food plotting for turkeys. Yes, I'm getting so many questions about that. Yeah. I mean that y- you can go to our youtube channel and kind of see what i get lots of questions about Mm -hmm. because we every time i you know we sort of hit this critical thing but same same with the podcast i guess right i get so many questions especially about i'd say the first week of september second week of september people Mm -hmm. really change focus to their fall food plots and a lot of people are asking questions now about how can they change things? What yeah, should and, they do to make you know, it better for turkeys? We, I mean, we talk about food plots off and on a good bit, I think, on this show. Um, but a lot of times we're kind of just talking about the basics. You know, yeah. we're talking about clover cereal grain mixes or perennial clovers, you know, and, right. and how we can use those for turkeys and how we might manage them if we're trying to, you know, have them serve as dual purpose deer attraction, deer nutrition Um, and turkey brooding, which I guess that would be three purpose, not two purpose, but, (laughs) um, you know, so we, we talk about all that, but I think what we're, what we have envisioned for this episode is to branch out and go into, you know, diversify in terms of some various different blends that you might try, um, to accomplish different objectives and things like that. Yeah. That, that is a timely episode, I suspect based, you know, based on the current interest that we're getting both of us uh that's going to be a popular idea and i i suspect the feedback is going to reflect that mm-hmm. I, I would think so too so yeah another one it, it's sort of out of place in comparison to those but why'd you give I, me I'm that just look? waiting i'm just waiting <laughs> in anticipation you know yeah. what's coming i do well, but i'm you know, but I'm, yeah, I'm trying to anticipate what you're going to say about it. <laughs> well, there is a really strong interest in predator communities and how they're influencing turkeys. And we've covered that ad nauseum before in various ways with various <laughs> people. And one thing that keeps coming up, and I, I think it's a relevant conversation, is w- what about coyotes? 
What, like, should we be worried about coyotes? How are they influencing turkeys? You know, I, I think a deep dive on that. I've done that before on on uh, social media, but I think that would be a really fun episode for us to mm-hmm. really focus on coyotes and how much they eat turkeys. You know, how are they influencing turkeys? What do we know about it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'll be a good one. I mean, we could talk some too about, you know, how um, the timelines for turkey declines and how closely are they associated with arrival of coyotes, especially, you know, in the eastern part of the United States. Yeah, I think it is a relevant discussion. And, you know, I didn't want this one to completely be absent of any information that people might learn from, but... Uh uh you know one way to think about it the we talk about the habitat problem magnifying uh the predator problem right right so in other words if you have poor habitat turkeys are more vulnerable to predators and then they get eaten more but that doesn't that's not a one way street so in other words like you know, hen nesting in a really depauperate plant community where they're really exposed, mm-hmm. they're probably fine if there's nothing to eat them. Yeah, it just so happens that the same places that you're not likely to find many turkeys, you're probably not likely to find many predators either. Mm-hmm. And some, I, I guess I shouldn't make that such an absolute statement. Um, well, yeah, definitely shouldn't yeah. be absolute. Yeah, but my, <laughs> Because I'm, I'm already, point, I'm already thinking, my brain's already coming up with caveats. But so my point is, introducing a predator into the mix could magnify habitat problems. Yes, it's not just the habitat problems magnify predator effects. It, it goes both ways. And while you know we've talked about this with poults at that life stage, you know it may not matter if there's anything to eat the poult. If you have poor habitat, they're going to die from an, yeah. another reason anyway. That's but right. But an adult may not. That's right. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's, I think that will be a fun episode to go through. And it it's definitely going to challenge our audience on both sides of that conversation because that is probably, uh, well, I don't, yeah, that's one of the most, if not the most divisive topic that yeah. we cover. And I think that um, one of the places that will probably end up just because it's almost impossible not to is talking about removal and how successful that is. Yeah. And um, I think we have to end up in that space. And that's where it really gets heated. Yeah. And we've, (laughs) and we've never talked. So my PhD research, you know, focused directly on, on coyote removal and Mm -hmm. how that changes coyote abundance. So it'll, that data will help speak directly to yeah, that's to the good. topic and and help listeners understand. You know, it's not just as simple as you know we remove three and we save X number of turkeys. It's a very complicated dynamic. Yeah, no, that, I think that's that's going to be a popular one. Mm-hmm. So, what else did we have on that list? Oh, um, we wanted to try to get Doctor Harper back on here sometime before not before too long um i know that you've been on spencer marshall's committee right Mm -hmm. as graduate research committee um so both spencer and marshall have been working on this fire season study that craig is the principal investigator on they just finished uh their master's projects collecting that data and and they're finishing up or at least i know um one of them is finishing up right now yeah it's jake Mm mm-hmm yeah, I think okay. he's going to be done um, early this fall. I, I think they're on a yeah. sim more. So okay. Spencer still, uh, he's gotten his thesis together and everything, mm-hmm. but hasn't defended it yet. But anyways, the point is, it's one of the most complete data sets on uh, measuring the responses of, fi- of burning during different seasons. The response yeah. of plants to burning during different seasons. Um, the other thing that's really powerful about that study is they had cameras in all the b- different mm-hmm. burn units. And so we can see how turkeys use areas that are burned during different times of the year um, and what that interaction is like. So I think that'll be a really good episode. I agree. And, that, that's a and, and who doesn't great love, topic. who doesn't love when Craig Harper comes on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's always fun to talk to and I always learn a ton every time. Right. So, yeah. uh, you know, the other thing 
that's coming up. Um, September. So October? this week, <laughs> that, this week that we're recording, this uh, we released our ninety second episode. Isn't that something? So two months will be on episode number one hundred. In two months, so what is that? End of October. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. End of October. We're gonna hit a hundred. So I'm thinking we need to do something special. I agree. We got to do something really special. So what is that going to be? I think we, I mean, our listener support has just been absolutely phenomenal. It's kept us motivated to keep doing this. I mean, several people have said it in their comments to us. This, this is a lot of work. And it's, you know, distracting us from other things that uh, that yeah. we have going on. I don't know the, if we if we weren't getting that feedback, I don't know that we'd still be doing this. No, it, it's a critical element. People value what's going on. They want us to continue and they keep giving us that feedback. And if you're one of those people, we really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. But that's what I was going to say is let's do something special and give it away. Yeah. Like we've been doing with these other things. Like, you yeah. know, let's... Let's show people that we really value the input and, you know, value our listeners. We we would not be going through the amount of effort and time it takes to put together a lot of these episodes if, right. if it was not yeah. for that feedback that this is ultimately affecting how people manage turkeys and hopefully benefiting turkeys as a, you know, as a, yeah, an end outcome. Mm-hmm. That's right, because, I mean, anytime, you know, I know for me, like, if doubts start to creep in about, man, I could just, I my research program, my teaching program, all that would be so much easier without having to squeeze these in every week. But um, it's like inevitably every time I start allowing myself to think down that path, I'll get an email or I'll get a Mm -hmm. private message or something else. And, and, you know, somebody will be like, thank you all so much for what you do, like, I had this this win or that win or you know something else and you know I can't stop <laughs> like when yeah. I hear that I can't stop you know yeah so yeah and the 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 testimonials and you know the hey look what I'm doing now mm-hmm. like all those things that that yep. really is you know refilling the tank yeah so uh, I don't know maybe like a signed turkey call or something. We could do that. Yeah. Oh, maybe people could let us out. Let us know out there. Is that something you would want? Yeah, like you a signed pot call. Oh, Lashley Goolsby signatures on it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you want me touching it. It may not call a turkey in after that point. Maybe, maybe we could uh, get somebody else to sign it that they'd value more, like one of our guests go. or something that are more famous. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Would you like us to get to sign it? <laughs> we want a wild turkey science yeah. podcast call, but we want Craig Harper to sign it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I think we'd probably just hang it up. <laughs> Is that where we? That, that's where we've ended up. But that's exciting, man. And I, I, I don't know. I just didn't know if we'd get to a hundred. That's so many. I never thought we would. That's crazy. I mean, I guess we never really had an end date in sight. We just knew that there yeah. was information that we needed to get out there. And it's. Well, I remember us having the conversations rolling. like, let's really stack up this thing front heavy because it, you know, who long, who knows how long we're going to keep this going. <laughs> and <laughs> and we did a good, and we did a great job of that. I think yeah, we I had, think, uh, I think so. What did we have like three months worth, worth of episodes when we first launched? Yeah, we and then as soon and then as soon as we exhausted those, <laughs> we started recording every week, and we haven't looked back. Yeah, our original plan was to to <laughs> stockpile and basically set aside time, and we're trying to get back to that model, FYI, because it's a much more sustainable thing in the long term. But, uh, yeah, that's exactly what happened. So for. <laughs> A year and a half, we have recorded most of the episodes of the week before it was launched. 
I'm so, just all I can think right now is that there's so many listeners that are out there probably thinking, well, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> you should give us a five star rating for our dedication, okay? Not for the quality. <laughs> well, I, I guess mean, I that, guess that, I might we, as well. I might we as have well stuck layer to it for like five hundred <laughs> days, you know. <laughs> I might as well layer onto this since we're already, you know, divulging all these trade secrets. <laughs> these inside, these we insides. don't know what's in the sausage. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I was gonna say is some. There's some weeks where our producer, you know, Charlotte, reaches out on Thursday and she's like, "Hey guys, are you gonna record something for me to edit this week?" <laughs> I just gotta go live on Monday. <laughs> I'm sure she appreciates that. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm sure. <laughs> She's well, there's been a few times where where we forget. Oh, you're going to be gone all next week. Yeah, and then we're like, well, when can you record? It's like, well, <laughs> I have a one hour window on Thursday evening. Can you do that? <laughs> yeah, Marcus will drop me a text and be like, "Hey, man, you got a minute to record?" I'll be like. Nah, man, I'm in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> no, I've never been to the Dominican Republic. But I don't know why Dominican. that example popped into my head. But <laughs> Like, what are you doing? Shooting doves or something? What's going on? <laughs> Do yeah. doves make it down there? Is there good dove hunting in the Dominican? I don't know, man. Okay. Uh, you know, the other thing that I, I definitely have appreciated is how difficult the podcasting thing is and how much the practice has helped. Yeah. Because it it's actually fairly difficult to keep a coherent conversation going on on these things. And early <laughs> on, like years and years ago, I really struggled with that. And I still see it Yeah, pretty commonly with, with uh, folks that are earlier in their career in particular. Yeah. Like it's, there's like pressure. Me. I haven't and, figured and it out yet. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to go there, but since you did, you know, it's hard to to keep it going. So there's something to be said for us being able to pull something off the last minute that everybody listening doesn't hate. You know? As far as we know. Yeah. Well, they didn't <laughs> write that they did in their yeah. in their review anyway. <laughs> so um, yeah. they're just all leaving us five star reviews because they get a lot of entertainment value of laughing at us. And <laughs> yeah. so they're just trying they're to egg us on to us. continue. <laughs> Oh man! How okay, horrible so, would that be? <laughs> so, um, trying to get us back, reined in a little bit on topic. Um, you know, we talked about a few topics coming up, and that that'll bring us cl- pretty close. You know, to October, and we even mentioned the hundredth episode is going to occur in October. Um, so we got a theme for that month too this year. Oh yes, what Oak- is that theme? October. October. See what we did there. What a good name. I mean, I think it was. Uh, Can we call it Oktoberfest? I think it. <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> I think it was Bobby or Dudley. You know, one of the gamekeepers guys that mentioned yeah. that when we went when we went on their show during October last year because we went on there yeah. to talk about managing oaks for wildlife. Um. Yeah. That that I remember us joking about it, but I could not remember when like if it was on this mm-hmm. show or on yeah. a different show or what yeah. but that that does ring a bell i think that's where it came up so we did a version of this last year um but it's going to be slightly different this year because number one we're covering some new topics um but even on the stuff where we, we're going to rehash some ground of what we covered last year i'm going to try to bring in some new literature on that as well mm-hmm. but kind I, of i have some as well some new literature. Yeah, that, I mean, so that's going to be a completely new conversation, sharing your, I think your so, new yeah. data. Yeah, so I've got... Well, I was even talking separate. So I have one of the studies that I've teased about. We have published some of the work, and I think it's going to be really relevant. But even separate from that, uh, you know, in a lot of our oak work that's ongoing, I, I've even ended up in a new literature space that, oh, I, nice. didn't, that I didn't know about. And, and it's rapidly growing, yeah. you know. There were dozens of papers in the last year on oak ecology. 
Right. So if you didn't catch that series last year, I'm sure we'll review a lot of the key points. But then um, if you did catch it, we're going to be adding a lot of new information. Yeah. Some of it's pretty cool stuff. Yeah. So starting out, you know, more broad and then narrowing down into the more technical, we're thinking of covering like the importance of oaks to turkeys, how often do they use them, um, you know, thinking about them as a food source and a cover source and a roost site, um, talking about your new oak mass study. And looking at differences mm-hmm. in species and, and mass production and timing of mass production, yep. timing of rain, all that kind of stuff. Um, managing oaks for turkeys to accomplish multiple objectives. And then one that I'm, I'm really excited about, and we've already discussed some good ideas for maybe bringing on a guest to discuss this one, is planting and caring for mass trees like oaks. Yeah. Like which species do you select? How do you care for them? Uh how do turkeys use them? When are turkeys using them? You know, I think a topic like that, man, I get a lot of questions like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I've done a little bit of that type of stuff, you know, as far as the outplanting, but mm-hmm. not a lot. So it's not something that I'm intimately familiar with. And, yeah. you know, most of my work has all been just like working with what we have, you know, with the native species that are already present as opposed yeah. to, to, to planting. But I know that that can be a critical um, very important tool in cer- on certain properties. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And certainly, even if it's not for the explicit purpose of improving nutrition or anything, it still can be very attractive. Absolutely. Right, and, you know, that's part of what we're doing here. Like, we want the property to be attractive to the wildlife that we're interested in also. So even if it and, isn't making nesting success increase or, or whatever— yeah. Uh, it still might have some value. And I feel another thing that's important about it too is I think all of us, especially if you're listening to this show, you like you probably like watching stuff grow, you know? Oh, yeah. And We're, there's it's something like innate a, for me. Like I the, need to be a yeah, farmer. There's something about growing trees. I really like watching yeah. trees grow that I've planted You should in look past. in my greenhouse right now. I'm always growing in, you know, a dozen species yeah. of trees at all times. Yeah. My, my wife hates it because and it's so... I, I'm like bringing seeds home all the time and I'm just like, oh, I wonder if I can grow this oak species. I wonder if I can grow that chestnut, but you know. How gratifying is it though when you, because like I collected some acorns last year from campus and I was able to germinate those. So now I've got like some of the, some of the more important trees and, and the more historic trees from around campus represented in my garden. You know, yeah, that's awesome. And and being able to germinate those, you know, and especially like red oaks when you're, you know, like yeah. chilling through the fridge and, and then like seeing that thing sprout. Yeah. I don't know. It's something special about it. Yeah. I've really gotten on to a chestnut kick. Uh, for mm-hmm. some reason, that one gratifies me more than anything. I really like it. And I, maybe it's the cold stratification process that I really yeah. like because it's what you're saying and the the whole process and then it's really difficult to protect them because the black rats really love them yeah and, uh, it's a constant problem but uh the other one that i have done is very similar to what you just said we have two chinkapin mm-hmm. on, on campus yeah. here at uf and i have collected seeds off of it and grown those and i just really found that delightful yeah like yeah. i just it was just intrinsically you know, uh, it, it uh, definitely, I don't know. It just yeah. made me feel good. You know? There's something <laughs> special. Well, I mean, the the weirdest thing is the first time you cold stratify something yeah. and then and then it germinates because you've been seeing those, seeing that little Ziploc sitting in the back of your fridge for months on end. Yeah. And you're thinking there's no, the first time you do it, you think there's no way. Yeah. This, this ain't going to work, you know? Yeah. And then when it does, it's like a miracle. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, it really I, I, feels like that. I really like it. And I think and I think what all that translates into, most importantly, is it increases people's enjoyment of their property. And when people enjoy their properties more, they spend more time there. And when they spend more time there, if, they, if they're informed on how to best allocate their time most efficiently, yeah. they're going to manage it better. I agree. That's a gonna, great... Enjoy it better. Way to put it. Yeah. You know, even that, that is something that happens with me. Like I, I like to grow things and then plant them on my, on my place. Mm -hmm. And I don't, it's not because I think it's going to make some big difference, but I enjoy it. 
and I'm enjoying being on the property and doing that. The more you write your signature on a place, I think the more intuitively, right? The more connection and attachment you have to it. Yeah. And the more that improves, the more you enjoy spending time there and the better you're going to take care of it. Yeah. I think that's a really, really strong point. So October. October. I'm excited. Man, that's a good one. Yeah. And (laughs) I mean, yeah. So things are, this is an exciting time of year for a lot of reasons. You know, we're getting that humidity drop, that temperature drop. Yeah. Hunting seasons are coming back around the corner. Some doves flying around. We've got, there's some doves flying around. (laughs) I just happen to have a six month old lab pup that's getting really good at retrieving. Hey. Yep. Man, the timing. That's I know. perfect. I know. She's getting good, man. And uh, we've got the 100th episode on the horizon and October. Yeah. Exciting times, October. man. October. <laughs> what did I say? You said October. Oh, my bad. <laughs> you forgot the A in there. And, <sighs> and the K. <laughs> I'm, I'm a professor, not a marketing genius, Marcus. <laughs> well, you could have fooled me. <laughs> I'll let you decide on which of those I, you could have pulled me on. <laughs> yeah. What else? Well, that's all we got, folks. Uh, <laughs> if you have ideas for other episodes, we'd really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and that and the other thing too. I guess you know we maybe should have introduced this as part of the the discussion earlier on, but I think kind of the problem we're facing right now is we're getting to this point where we've talked about a lot of the major things that people are interested in related to turkeys Mm -hmm. and, you know, talking to other people that, um, have been doing this longer than, than we have, they tell us it's like this unavoidable that you're going to loop back to certain topics, Mm -hmm. right? Because you always have new listeners coming in and you, and they're not, and they're not going back to two years ago to listen to the episode that you did on the topic that they were interested in. Well, I think that's something for us to keep in mind, too, that our audience is probably double what it was last year yeah. at that time. Yeah. So, you know, if we're going to continue to grow, we need to continue to come back to some of these topics. The other thing, like with the Oaks, we have a whole suite of new information now to share. That's right. Like it, that. that same, with fire. I mean, we could have October every year and probably have new content that's relevant to land management and turkey management every yeah. year. You know, we're going to touch on some of the same things, but, you know, we, we certainly uh, can come back to that topic and not exhaust it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, <laughs> um, One thing that I'm interested in hearing from folks on is if there's any other how-to stuff. Like, yeah. What, yeah, what do you want to know how to do? Yeah, like we talked about that one episode, like we're – I think we're going to do, we're going to have a lot of how to stuff in the food plot episode. And we're going to have a lot of how to stuff in the October series. Um, but what else do you want to hear about? Yeah. I really hope folks respond and, and let us know Th- those are the things that are most gratifying to me is having, you know, 10 or 12 people reach out and say, Hey, I really would like to know what to do in this situation or, can you guys talk about this? Because I'm not sure if I'm with you yet. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, you know, then us being able to, to really cover a topic in depth. And sometimes it makes us realize, oh, we actually haven't exhausted that topic. That's true. Right. We just did that recently. Yeah. Where we felt like we had done it. I think that, like the predator, the, the coyote focused episode, that's another one. Like we kind of felt like we had dipped into that pot a few times too many. And uh, mm-hmm. we're still getting people asking for that content. So, you know, the only request that I get, people want more episodes on why corn is bad. That's all they ask me for ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did just get one and I haven't had a chance to respond yet. But, and maybe our audience can respond to this. But one person, uh, he said that he appreciated us talking about that issue and trying to be. Mm-hmm. You know, as as uh, objective and and uh, forthcoming with information as we could be, but he'd like to hear us talk about what are some alternatives. Like if we switch to 
if we switch from corn to sorghum, for example, like some of the issues associated with feeding might be alleviated by doing mm-hmm. so. So yeah. I think we could, we, we've got some uh, information like that that we could cover if folks want us to. Yeah. That all sounds good. You got anything else? Well, I do have something to give away. Nice. Yeah. What you got? Did you pick a, a listener? Nope, that's all on you, buddy. <laughs> I didn't either. Um, and uh, yeah, the reason I, the reason I don't like it is because the the reviews the are you don't like what having to pick one is the reviews are not like our the way that we access them. They're not in a good format to make it easy to randomly select someone, so it's kind of a pain. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we can uh, come up with a better way to to do it other than uh, us just aimlessly searching through it on the air. Live. <laughs> uh, Charlotte actually mentioned to me today that she was like, yeah, like, I think everybody knows that you're just like going through, cycling through on the air. And I was like, well, I don't think we've really tried to hide that, have we? No, I haven't I haven't tried to be dishonest about what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, uh, maybe we can come up with a better... I don't know if you can download them somehow or... Maybe the we one thing I can say about my process is I was not, I was not cherry picking someone. <laughs> yeah. It was I, not... Mine has been completely randomized in the sense that I have no idea who's getting selected. Yeah, and I yeah, and I haven't known any of the people that it went to. Yeah, as far as I know, because most yeah. people use handles. So yeah, <laughs> well, I I do have one selected here, so I guess we can move on. I I guess we've kind of started the tradition that we read off the. The uh, I did that, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's up to well, you. I think you, I think you started it off because, uh, what the last two or three or four, you have been the one that selected someone and gave it away, and uh, you've done that on each one, so I'll do that this time. Yeah, I've been the only one around here carrying my weight. Uh, uh where we are going you back to you didn't hear that, did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> I just completely ignored you. Would you okay. say that's fine? No, come on. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a bad joke about carrying my weight. <laughs> and you're not but anyway yeah well, on the giveaways I'm just, I'm just waiting on you to carry some weight you're just down there trying to change the world with all all that funding you just <laughs> we just talked about in last week's episode yeah well I'm doing my best okay you're, you're doing a great job <laughs> I, I'm doing my best so uh, we have another item to give away this week and this one I think is a really cool one and it's also you know kind of a special one for me because one of the first companies that kind of stepped up to the plate to help us it's called Honeycomb Gang Pulse. Mm-hmm. They've you know small company in Florida and uh they they really wanted to help the turkey program and they did a fundraiser last year where they had Yeah, a, that was like last summer. We were only a few min- a few months in, I think. Yeah. And even, yeah, well, it was definitely early on in the podcast, and I just really appreciate, you know, they're a small company, but, you know, really convicted to, to give back. And they're, here they're doing it again, you know, where they want to help us mm-hmm. and help us be successful because they appreciate that we're trying to give back to turkeys, and that's what they're trying to do, and, and I appreciate that. And even from, the, you know, very early on, they've been strong supporting, and Last year, they, they did a special on calls, and part of the proceeds they donated to my lab to help support the, the podcast and research efforts re- related to turkeys. So I, I really appreciate that. So this week, they have agreed to, to give a listener a pot call, and I think this one is a, a, a copper pot call. Mm-hmm. Nice. I have seen the ones they makes, and they they look you don't, good. You don't have it in hand, do you? No, I don't. He's going to okay. send it directly to to the listener. So, yeah, if you win this, reach out to us, and we'll get you connected with with Daniel Wentworth, who is uh, owns that company, and uh, we'll get you this pot call. But uh, the person 
who I selected is, let's see, Sean Peterson, 79. You don't know Sean Peterson, do you? I don't think so. Oh, that's a cool looking call. Oh, did you find it online? Well, I just went to Honeycomb Custom Calls and I found that they make a uh, signature copper friction call. Yeah, I think that's... Yeah, I think that's the one. God, that's pretty. It's a good looking call, man. And they've got I saw him, him at the convention and he had several of his things yeah. that he had made and man, they they're a good looking call. Yeah, I'm looking at him and it looks like he's got several different varieties and some of them are even like the pot is made out of um like he's done some epoxy resin mm-hmm. with the wood and uh, it's good it's, looking stuff and it's it? beautiful. Yeah. So uh let's let's read off this this review. What was it? Sean Peterson seventy nine. Sean Peterson seventy nine. So reach out to us. He said that the headline is this is worth the listen. These guys are really laying out the science and not just the opinion of what it what's going on with the turkey population and what it takes to get it back on track. Uh, and then actually we addressed his question on there, but I don't know if we did because we read what he wrote, but he wants to know what we can do to better manage turkeys with small acreages, like 20 to 40 acres on his case. Yeah. So that, that's another good episode idea. Uh, yeah. What do we do on small properties? Yeah. Which I think we've talked about to some degree, but maybe not, uh, completely focused on it. Like what he's asking for. Right. So thanks for the, the feedback and the, the rating. We really appreciate it. And just reach out to us, you know, when you hear this and, and we'll make sure to get you that call. Cool. So good stuff, man. Yeah. Good looking call. Wish it was mine. <laughs> well, we might be able to arrange something, Will. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I'm going to select your rating. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So it, it it is semi-random. I had no idea, and you know, I, I I've, I'm pretty sure that I've read every rating of the podcast at some point in yeah. the past. I usually check on it every once in a while, uh, just mainly because you have stuff like that where you you know you get a little bit of positive feedback, and that's nice. But also mm-hmm. the questions, you mm-hmm. know, when people put them in there are helpful. But uh, I don't remember reading that one, so. I randomly selected it, and then I didn't know what it was going to say, so it's a little bit risky, a, I guess. I just had a random thought. Do you think we should set up a uh, like a turkey science email address? Like just set up a, like a turkey science Gmail that, that people could send questions into one place? Um, would that you think that would make things easier? Um, if people out there think it, they would rather have that, like we could have wildturkeyscience at gmail.com or something. Well, now you said it, and somebody else is going to go register it and hold it hostage (laughs) and make us pay them. (laughs) Well, I don't think that that's going to happen. (laughs) We'll just do Wild wild Turkey (laughs) Science 101. (laughs) (laughs) Then we'll get emails from people wanting bourbon. (laughs) Wild Turkey Science, long beard. <laughs> I'll think about it. Yeah, if if uh, if y'all think that's something that would be useful, let us know. Yeah, man, we've really re- asked him for a lot. <laughs> like this whole episode was basically like, can y'all help us do our job? <laughs> <laughs> Did we though? It kind of felt that way to me. <laughs> well, well. I mean, we're asking them to do things for their own benefit, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Help us help you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now that you put it that way. All right. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We really appreciate it. Thanks for sticking with us if you've if you've been around for a long time. If you're a new listener, we hope you'll stick around and provide some feedback. Absolutely. Yeah. Glad to we, have you here. We have been enjoying it, and and the feedback has just been tremendous. And I can't say that enough. That you know, it's, it's definitely refueling the tank. Hmm. And you'll learn more on most episodes. 
this is this, <laughs> this is this is an exception. All you learned okay. is that we don't have our stuff together. <laughs> well, I think so. people like that it's not overproduced, right? Well, that, I think I mean that Maybe. actually was part of the plan. I like to, I like to tell myself that anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, part of it we didn't want it. That was from the beginning. We didn't want it to be overproduced and scripted. We wanted it to be a conversation. It's just unfortunate which I back that it's on, you and me. Which I pushed <laughs> back on really hard. But you made me scrap my notes, Marcus. Yeah. I'm well, still you bitter about notes it. to this one. I'm I mean, still bitter. See, I you didn't completely lose that tendency. <sighs> so it's good to have some balance. So I'm getting yelled at right now, just to make sure we're clear, by a college professor for taking notes and bringing notes and being prepared. I don't prepared. think I yelled. Did, it, did I yell? <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you guys right. next week. Thanks, everybody. Wild Turkey Science is part of the Natural Resources University Podcast Network and is made possible by Turkeys for Tomorrow, a grassroots organization dedicated to the wild turkey. To learn more about TFT, check out turkeysfortomorrow.org.